So in this problem, we do not have someone standing on a scale. Instead, the scale is a spring scale. So instead of using the force of nor the normal force of someone pushing down on a scale, like compressing a scale, it's actually using the tension force or the elastic force or the spring force in this scale. You can call it whatever you want, but essentially the fish has a force of gravity pulling it down and it has this force of the spring, um, let's just call it force of the spring, pulling it up. And in this case, since that's this force that the spring has, that's the thing we're going to use for apparent weight. Okay, so um, we're going to try to fit. So since the question is, well, again, the question is asking, um, what will this, let's see, what is the true force of gravity? So when they tell us the scale reads 200 newtons, so this is what it says. The question says the scale reads 200 newtons. What they mean is F of the spring is equal to 200 newtons. Okay. So they also tell us a few more things. For example, the whole elevator is accelerating upwards at a rate of 1.2 meters per second squared. Okay. Um, and then the scale reads, and it wants to know, well, how heavy is the actual fish? Like, what is the actual force of gravity on the fish? Um, so let's just check this out in terms of the forces involved. We know that MA equals the sum of the forces. So in the vertical direction here, MA equals, again, I'm going to take the upward direction to be positive this time. Last time in the question three, we took down to be positive because the elevator was accelerating down. Now I'm going to take up to be positive because the elevator is accelerating up. That way I don't have to deal with a negative 1.2 here. So in that example, then I've got the spring force minus the force of gravity is right here. So I don't know M, do I? But I can say MA equals um, FS, let's just expand this, minus MG. So if you think about it, I know A, 1.2, I know the spring force, it's 200, and I know G, it's 9.8. So my only variable that's unknown is M. So I'm just going to rearrange this to solve for M. So MA plus MG is equal to FS. So then M is just equal to FS minus A plus G. So plugging all this in, I get 200 divided by... A is 1.2 and F and at G is 9.8. So solving that, we get 200, uh, 200 divided by 1.2 plus 9.8, and we end up with 18.18, 18.18 meters. Or sorry, kilograms. And that's the mass. But the question. All right. So now that we know the mass of the object. Um, we can find the force of gravity, which is mg. So then putting in 18.18 times 9.8 will give us the answer of 178 newtons. And that's the true force of gravity. So what they're saying is in this accelerating elevator, the scale seems to want to call, say the fish has a weight of 200 newtons. But that's because the, um, the elevator is accelerating up, making the fish seem heavier than it is, when in actual fact, given the physics, the fish is actually 178 newtons. Um, and then it asks, what will the scale read if the elevator cable breaks? So if you think about it, if the elevator cable breaks, you've got the elevator that's suddenly accelerating down at 9.8 meters per second squared, this fish is going to experience a force of gravity also accelerating it at um, 9.8, 9.8 meters per second squared. So if they're both accelerating at the same rate downward, there is no way for the fish to exert a force on the spring, so the spring cannot hold the fish up. So basically the spring force is going to equal to zero in this, con in this case. So the fish is going to seem and feel weightless. And that's how you would feel in an elevator if the cable was cut until it landed and then that would be a different story. 
But um, while the ele elevator is accelerating downward at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, so is the fish, and the uh, results would be a apparent weight or a sense of weightlessness.